Nvidia brought us down here to LA to check out something pretty freaking interesting, a GeForce GTX 980. Now, why is that interesting? We've had these for a while. It's in a laptop, and no, it doesn't have a little M denomination after it. So yes, it is a full desktop GPU. It has 2048 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1126, a boost clock of 1216, a memory clock of six gigabits per second, which you just don't see in laptops. Four gigabytes of memory, a 256 bit interface width, and yeah, it's seriously a 980 in a laptop. Nvidia, unsurprisingly, is binning specific 980 chips for this because they need good, well-binned 980s for this because it has to sit in the laptop. It has to fit within certain specifications. Also, they're going to be in laptops that have four to eight phase power supplies, which is beast mode and not something you're used to seeing on a laptop. Often you see two to three phase power supplies, not four to eight. Uh, it has record breaking performance on air, which is not very surprising, but we'll see what people can do to it down the line. And they're going to be working with laptop manufacturers to have it so that the CPU and the GPU are fully unlocked and overclocking ready. They're also working with those laptop manufacturers to pump more cooling options into these units, up to 50% more apparently in some use cases. And that should help because you'll be able to tweak fan speed profiles. If you want it to go really loud and get more overclocking, great. If you want it to be quieter and maybe get a little bit less overclocking, that's great as well. In terms of overclocking, you'll be able to change core clock speeds and memory clock speeds like I mentioned earlier, but not power limit or voltage limit as it's a laptop and messing with those things can be a little bit more dangerous than on a desktop where you will have more leeway. Now, they were serious about this and actually let me tinker and mess around with some of the laptops, which is pretty freaking cool. I was able to benchmark a thinner kind of Gigabyte Aorus laptop, Aorus X7, which was pretty badass, and a thicker Clevo on the other side. So alongside of those, I tested a normal system, which had a kind of generalized setup and a desktop 980 in it. And we got to see the performance numbers in things like Firestrike Extreme, Tomb Raider, Shadow of Mordor, and Metro Last light, which was pretty impressive because they claimed that there would be about a delta of maybe 5%, and in a lot of cases it was less than that. These systems were really, really close, and that's even considering other components in these laptops, like CPU, which you have to take into the equation here. So it's badass. It's a full desktop GPU in a laptop, and it actually runs properly, and it's overclockable on top of that. Impressive, but what else is there? Also to GeForce Experience, they are bringing VR optimization. So with the 950, we saw low latency optimization for stuff like MOBAs, and there's normal optimization, which is more well-rounded, and then we're gonna be seeing VR optimization, which is pretty awesome. So the idea behind this is tweaking your settings is something that a lot of people like doing and one of the reasons why someone may not actually use GeForce Experience. Others like it, others don't. But in VR, I think that line is going to blur a little bit more because tweaking settings is going to be very annoying. When you strap a screen to your face and then something's wrong, you can get sick or it can be pretty disturbing very quickly. So knowing that everything's just going to kind of work is a pretty big benefit. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe, share, favorite, all that kind of stuff. Buy a t-shirt because they're awesome. Use our Amazon affiliate link to buy some stuff because it's cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.